G'day and welcome to Dave's Model Workshop. Uh, this week it's another update on the progress of the Krupp Prots and I also found an interesting way to add sort of blue tone to Panzer Grey which is about halfway through so if that's all you want skip to about halfway through I'll put a special header page in the middle that you can find um, otherwise stick with me just to see how it comes along and watch me fix a bit of a big mistake. Alright, enjoy. G'day and welcome to Dave's Model Workshop. Uh, in my last video when I introduced my Krupp Prots diorama, this is where I left it. So I was pretty happy with the painting overall, um, ready to start doing a few dot filters with some oil paints. So I've sealed this, this is all enamel paints, and I've sealed it with a coat of Tamiya Clear, which is a water-based seal. <coughs> Excuse me. And so, ready to start some oil filters. But, I'm not too jazzed about this section here where the hairspray chipping has come off. And it's just, I don't know, it's given a very unconvincing, big, chunky kind of chipping to the wood effect underneath. And look, yeah, it's kind of, I mean, it is obviously the, the colour I painted the wood. It's a kind of light, faded grey colour, but... For my money, it just it, it looks very, very fake. The other side, I'm happy with. You've got some kind of nice, subtle chipping, and it worked out much, much more subtly and much better. Fine at the back, you know, fine inside. I'm happy with that faded floor there. It's a bit scuffed. But just these big, chunky chips here really bother me. So what I'm thinking is I'll use some enamel paints, sorry, some acrylic paints, to try and weather the wood underneath a little bit and just see if I can make that look less sketchy. If that doesn't work, if I can't get this looking more like faded wood, then I'll just you know paint over the top a bit more grey, a bit more German grey, and then work it out from there. But I'm going to try this first and just see if I can resurrect it. Fingers crossed. So the colours I'm working with here, so these are all, as I said, acrylic colours, and the beauty of that is that they won't be affected once I do a oil filter wash or an oil dot filter over the top of this. So I've got a bit of Russian green highlight, some German sand beige, some white, some black, and you know what, these are just the ones I happen to have here to be honest. A bit of water, and really I'm just kind of mixing up some random colours to just see what's going to look good here. Hopefully it will look good here. Already that's feeling a little better. Um, I'm just dipping my paintbrush into some water so that it thins it out a little bit. And just trying some random colours just to see what's going to work. Not quite sure, but there's no harm in trying. Alright, you can kind of see where that's at. I'm going to leave that to dry and see what it's like when I come back to it. So I'm ready to do the dot filters. I've got some oil paints here, various shades as you can see. <clears throat> have the vehicle here and just gonna put a few random dots of each in various spots. No particular system to it. And then a brush dipped into some thinners. Grab a tissue ready for that. And most of the thinners washed off. And then just streak them down. That's a bit extreme there, obviously. But the beauty of this is it's quite forgiving and you can get away with whatever you think looks real. That red 
needs a bit extreme there. Let's thin that a hell of a lot more. I might actually get some white into the mix as well because this is a bit too red and orange and I'm not loving that. Yeah, I'll get some white into the mix. But that's basically how you do it. Easy as. So you can see where I've added the white. Now let's just fade that down. And I'm doing this late at night. It's probably a better idea to do this in daylight, just so you get more of a sense of how realistic it's looking. Because this might look fake as when it's actually in the daylight. To me, I'm pretty happy with that for now. It's a little bit caught between the the planks of wood there. Yeah, I'm going to stick with that. See how we go. I'll do some more. Well, this is it in the cold light of day. So, one, it's glossy. Two, it just looks like I spilled black paint down the side of my model. It's not a good look. The um, the rest of the Weathering the oil dot filter has come up pretty well, I think. I'm fairly happy with all that. Some subtle effects just around there. We get focus. And even this side, I'm pretty happy except for this. So, I'm just going to airbrush it. See if I can fix it doing that. I don't know what else I'll do if this doesn't work. Bugging if I know what I'll do if this doesn't work. We will see. Well, luckily that's hidden it pretty well. So all I did was spray paint it with a lighter shade of grey and just really low PSI so that I could really control how much was coming out. I didn't want a big glob of full paint there. I wanted some of that background weathering to still kick in and I think it looks okay. I'm gonna stop now. I'm gonna let you know work out when discretion is the better part of valour and stop stuffing around with it and move on to the rest of my weathering. But yeah, relieved because I really did not have any other plan up my sleeve if this didn't work and also just like to point out all the paint on my outdoor table here it's a good look don't tell anyone <laughs>
and then Shouldn't be coming out dirty like that. I think I dipped it in too far. Um, yeah, get most of the paint off. Most of the paint. Most of the thinners off. My goodness, it's been a long week. And then just subtly. Oh my goodness, it's not even in focus. Bloody hell! Sorry, guys. Ah, boy, it really has been a long week. It's Friday night, and it's been a long week. So I'm going to try that again, so you can actually see it. Dipping my toothpick into the paint, little dot filter, and that's it. There's a slight bluish tinge there now. may not be immediately obvious, but it's there. So what I've found it really useful for is kind of hinting at shadow. So in the tray bed here at the back here, I've kind of done it in the corners and it just gets a bit of shadow in there. That slight shadow right in the corner here. All it is, is a bit of a blue tint. Just done exactly the way I just showed you. Slight shadow down the bottom there, sort of around this area. Bit of a blue tint. I also found it very useful for just hinting at the bottom of the tray bed. So, kind of lighter colours at the top, and then putting a bit of the blue down the bottom here really makes it look a little bit more three-dimensional. Gee, you can see that splodge there now badly, can't you? Yeah, it's going to have to be hidden. Um, yeah. So I think I've, you know, quite happy with that. It's subtle, and I'm going to take, this is artificial light, I am going to take some footage for you tomorrow in daylight. It's a bit late in the evening here, and it's still scorching hot. But, um, yeah, that's how I'm achieving my slight blue tinge to Panzer Grey. I don't know, you may have different methods, your results may vary, but for me, it's working a treat and it's a lot of control, it's not just a great big overall filter, uh, it's really, you know, really tailored and specific and pinpoint accuracy, I'm loving it. So, I'll take a few videos tomorrow, a bit of a video tomorrow morning for you, and show you that in some natural light. Okay, so just to reinforce again how I did that, because I think I did a very bad job of it last night, to apply the blue just a dip top dip dip top dip what the hell is a dip top dip just a couple of splats very fine splats with a toothpick with a toothpick dip your brush slightly into some kind of spirits and then wipe most of it off and then very subtly blend the blue wherever you wanted it to be I felt that it needed a little bit there. It might be a bit heavy-handed still, and the beauty of this is it's so forgiving, so, so forgiving, it's incredible. Um, you know, you've got plenty of time to do what you need to do. This blue paint has been sitting on this palette here for three days now in Australian summer heat. It's been 38 degrees yesterday, 38 degrees Celsius, and it's totally usable this morning. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So you just get a slight tonal gradation down the bottom there on that plank of wood, and that's the effect that you're after. And you can be as heavy-handed as you want, or you can be as subtle as you want, and it's so flexible. <clears throat> and I guess this is a bit different to a, a pin wash, where you can see those sort of streaks of white where I've pin washed it. So you dip it at the top, and then you just streak, streak, streak down, and you use quite a lot of thinners. On this, you apply it wherever you want. It's a tiny little pin wash wherever you think you need a little bit more shadow on this Panzer grey colour, on this German grey colour, and it's really effective. I've never really done it this way before, and it just it gives you such beautiful localised toning. It's really enjoyable to do. I'm, I'm loving it, if I do say so myself. All right, now I'm going to show it to you in some natural daylight. So here it is in natural daylight. It's a bit of an overcast day, but this is, yeah, natural, non-direct sunlight. So I'm happy with that tonal variation, particularly around the kind of front fenders and the front bonnet or the front hood. Um, there's still work to be done, obviously. There's still lots of little pieces to be added to the Krupp props here. Um, you know, wing mirrors, the tools mounted to the side, etc. But for 
the weathering of the vehicle itself, I'm happy. There'll be dust and I'll add pastels and stuff like that. Um, but for the basic vehicle ready to go and ready to start being detailed, I'm very, very happy. It's come up nicely. I'm happy that I managed to fix that bodgy bit on the wood on the other side. It's still not perfect, but I can live with where it's at. Um, yeah, not a huge progression this week on it, to be honest. It's December, it's the silly season. Um, yeah, there's a lot happening in the world at the moment. But I'm happy to have gotten this chunk bit, and I'm really happy to have fixed that. And it's a bit exciting to get the wheels on, too. And you can see just that little bit of blue where I've added it at the bottom of that wood just a minute ago. Right about just up above my finger there. And it's just such a lovely, subtle way of, of adding tone. And I've not really done it that way before. And I don't know why I haven't done it before like that. It's a, it's a really good way of, you know, I've seen lots of dot filters done where you're getting that kind of rain streak effect. And that's great. It's, you know, it works beautifully for that. But for adding shadows, I've never really done it that way before. And it's really effective. I love it. I'm going to have to try it on other colours other than Panzer Grey. Yeah, chuffed with that. But yeah, really, this is the bit I love. That's the hero for me. <laughs> I'm obsessed with that. And it's such a feature of the Krupp Prots to him. It's a weird looking truck. And that front is a real feature of it, so I'm happy that's come up well. So yeah, there's windscreen glass, glass to be added, and there'll be windscreen wiper marks in the dust and the wheels. I mean, I've still got to do a big, uh, a little sort of uh, pin wash overall for oily details, so I've got to start adding brown sludge to the hubs and the wheel lugs and stuff like that. There's a lot to be done still, but for this week, I'm happy to have gotten this far. Alright guys, I hope this has been interesting. I feel like I haven't given you much this week, but uh, yeah, I'm happy with that ex experiment that it worked out. I'm happy to fix that, and I'm happy that that blue pin washing really worked nicely, and it's a good way to add blue to your Panzer Grey. Alright guys, I'm going to leave it there. And next week, I think I've got a special Christmas treat for you all. Uh, should be interesting, should be fun. And I'm going to leave it there, and I'll chat to you next time. If you've got any questions, please chime in below. Otherwise, I'll chat to you next week on Dave's Model Workshop. See ya.